All right. Welcome, folks, to the third edition of Time Talks. We are at third edition. This feels super cool. And today we have one of our OGs, cohort one fellow, Shubham Verma, is here, and uh, he recently got promoted at Ikeans, which is like super cool. So, uh, without any further ado, we'll go to Shubham. Over to you, Shubham, to maybe start with a quick introduction and then get into your tiny talk. Yeah, sure. Um, hey everyone, uh, my name is Shubham Verma, and as uh, Swapnil mentioned, I am a SE three recently uh, at Geekians, and uh, like this is my first talk, so I am a little nervous, but also pretty excited. Okay, so I can share my screen and get started, right? Share screen. Okay, I think I need to rejoin back. Okay. Yeah, I'll just be back. Yep, yep, sure. All right. Uh, I see Narayan only who has the video on, so I'll indulge with him. Hey, Narayan, what's up? How's your weekend going? You mentioned you're enjoying summer. Both of yeah. where you are there right now. Um, so I'm currently in Bremen. It's not part of Germany. So here temperature is around 25 degree. I mean 24, 25. So going great. Oh nice, nice. Hey sure. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, I guess now it will work. I hope so. Is it good? Yep, it is. Okay. Uh, okay, so we will be uh, diving the code, but I just have two big pretty slides. So, as I mentioned, uh, I'm Shubha Burma, SE3 at Ikeans, and today we'll be talking about uh, managing bundle size in React monorepos. Uh, so, I'll just quickly show you the resource link. Uh, so if you just head over to this URL, it would open up the repo with the source code and uh, it would also have the slide link. Shuvam, can you drop that link in the chat? Yeah. How do I... I'll just, I'll just type it out. Oh, I got it to the Zoom UI. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There, there's like a number. It's, it's a floating thing uh, at the top. Yep. So I think this should work. Okay. okay yeah. So we'll get started. So I'll come back to the code. So, so we will be uh, for this. Talk, I will be uh, using Next.js and the use case that I have is, let's say we have, uh, we have two pages. One would be a new page, another is called an old page. The use case could be, uh, for now, it could be like the new pages, maybe you're migrating to a new page. Uh, in case of Netflix, uh, what they do is Netflix.com uh, is built with their own UI but the top 10 Netflix is built with Tailwind. So something like that where we can have like two different uh, stacks for two different pages. So uh, I'm going with that example. So if I yeah, go over to localhost, you if I open up the old page, it's written in Bootstrap. And what it's, it does is it's just making a, placeholder API call with some ID and returning the user's data. And we are just rendering the name and the username over here. And these buttons would allow us to go uh, for, for different IDs. And if I go back again, so this old page is bootstrap in our case, and new pages, uh, it's in a library called 
Tamagri, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's, ba it's based on uh, this library. And it does the same thing. O only thing is it's a completely different li library for this page. So now for coming to the talk, I need to open up the also. And, and in the network tab, yeah, before that we also have, so in our underscore app, we, we have a wrapper called layout renderer, which decides uh, whether to render the, like the Tamagui library or bootstrap. And that code looks something like, so we just import both our layouts and based on the prop that is passed, whether it's old or new, uh, we just render that layout. So if the, uh, if the prop is called old, we are picking up the uh, old layout from here and we are rendering the component and same for the new one. So that is how the switch uh, happens. So when I open up, click on open bootstrap, the bootstrap page opens up. And when I click on the Tamagui button, that UI renders up. Now the thing is, uh, we don't really want, so if the user is on bootstrap page, we don't really want the other library content to be bundled and loaded, right? And we can see it's currently uh, loaded. So if I just refresh the page over here and go to, why does it not say anything? Like one second. Let me try it in another browser. Okay. okay. So I'm on the old page, which is Bootstrap. And in the network response, you can see that uh, the underscore app is of 15 MB. Its size is 15 MB. So uh, users data is required to load download that content, right? And if I click on Tamagui, uh, you see no other extra call is meant to uh, load the data. Basically, the on the page load, both the layouts, both, both their respective CSS are being loaded. So which is not uh, really a good thing. Why should a, a user who is on old page needs to download the content of a new site, new page, right? So we can fix that. Uh, so in next JS, uh, or even in React, we have dynamic imports. So the way that works is uh, instead of importing everything at once, what we could do is we would write dynamic. Then I think it's takes up this. Uh, and over here, we can write our import with uh, the React Bootstrap layout and thought then would be So what we are saying is don't import everything at once. Uh, only when the user is on the old page, dynamically import that file uh, and then render it. So we can, we can do the same thing for the Tamagui layout. And uh, you can see squiggly lines because type issue. I'm not fixing that right now. Uh, okay, so now we have made this minor change. Instead of importing everything at once, we just wrap it in the dynamic, which comes from the next JS, and uh, everything works the same. So now, uh, if I go back, maybe I need to reload. Okay, I think I messed up the syntax. Okay. Then over here we can write SSRS first. That means uh, this component won't 
uh, run on the server side by next by uh, next days and then Okay, I am missing up the sentence. Not Okay, yeah, it's it works. So basically, again, Next.js would only import or basically only bundle or only download this file when it's required. So for example, if I network that, Initially, the underscore app was of 15 MB, but now it's only 3 MB. That's because uh, we are only importing the RB layout. So you can see it over here. It only downloaded the RB layout file. And if I click on the Tamagui layout, you would see only then it downloaded the new layout. So this way, uh, like user doesn't have to uh, download extra files when it's not required and also during the bundle size uh, because they are uh, dynamic so on the server side the bundle size would reduce because uh, it's only imported or bundled when required uh, we can do the same for css so i don't know if it's in the network tab but in the underscore app uh, these are certain css that is only required by the the new page so we don't again we don't really need to uh, import all of that css so we can again uh, use the, uh, the dynamic import so if the component dot layout is new so we are saying if we are on the new page only then we would uh, import these files, import, import these uh, CSS files. So the syntax would look something like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you can see it over here if I refresh. These are the all the CSS files. You can see only the Tamagui ones are loaded and the Bootstrap ones are uh, they are not loaded. So this is another optimization that we can do to, run, uh, to only in dynamically import the CSS. And similarly, uh, we also have this bootstrap file, so we can do the same thing. So if the page was old, uh, we would just import the CSS file only on that page. So by this, uh, only if I head over to the bootstraps page, the bootstrap CSS is downloaded as you can see it over here. And if I head over to the new page, uh, nothing is downloaded. So this is how uh, it would work on the client side. Uh, but on the server side, uh, if I close my server and if I just stash these changes just to compare the before and after, If we were on our older changes, basically where we were importing all the CSS for all the uh, on all the pages, and we were importing both the layouts for all the pages, and in this case, if we build our uh, next app, so currently we are building a production build for it, and uh, over here is what when the webpack would bundle all the required data. So we we'll let it bundle for now and it would return us the size of the things. So you can see, uh, firstly, 205 KB uh, 
first load JS is basically the the load that is required on the server side. So it's 205 over here and 190 for the new page and the old page. We don't really like in the old page, we don't really need all of this, but it was still bundled. And the overall uh, load shared by all the pages would have been 190 kilobytes, right? And if I just uh, pop the changes again, what we have made. So what we had done was we were dynamically importing the files. So if I did the same thing again, taking its time. So yeah, you can see how big the difference is. Earlier, the first load were in 200, 190 to 200 kilobytes and the whole load that was shared, basically 190 kilobyte of JavaScript was uh, shared between all of these pages. But after the changes that we made, it has reduced to only uh, 80 KB of common load shared and around 85. So this is a good technique uh, uh, by which we can reduce our bundle size. And if I start this production build, okay, and if I again, um, just to reload this page. You would see the underscore app is now, because this is a product uh, production build, the bundle size would uh, reduce. The underscore app is around 4KB for this page and only the CSS that is required, which was the CSS required for by the new library, only those are uh, loaded over here. So you can see like uh, this one, uh, and some other JS files. And if I click on open bootstrap page, you would see only then it imported the bootstrap. It basically downloaded the bootstrap files only on this particular page. And if I reload the page again, you would see the underscore app. Yeah, and one more benefit of this is uh, Next.js would basically cache the responses. So like, even if we click multiple times, uh, the browser would pick up from the cache and write the value is now reduced to 10 KB. So this is what, uh, this is how we can uh, reduce bundle sizes. I'll just quickly demonstrate once again, just recap. So initially we were inter importing both our layouts, both our pages uh, at like on the, at the same time, basically. But now, now what we have done is we will only import that layout when it is uh, required. And similarly for CSS, earlier we were importing like all the CSS. We didn't need bootstrap in Tamagui page and we didn't need all of the CSS in the bootstrap page. So we have just uh, separated them. So if the component is new, only then we would import this uh, CSS. It would do the same thing for this file also, but it's fine for now. So that's pretty much it. The main thing was how we could use the dynamic input on the next JS side and also in the JS side. So on the JS side, this would be the syntax to import CSS files. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So I'll just end by again, like going to the PPT. Uh, these are the resources. Uh, I have shared the link uh, in the chat and the repo, you could go head over to the repo. You can try it out for yourself. I have added some more resources in the uh, repo. And lastly, thank you for listening. Uh, we can connect uh, and we can discuss about the talks. If you're into gaming, uh, Red Dead Redemption is my favorite game. So we can talk about any games, any shows, movies you like. 
and you can connect with me on uh, social. So I'll share that one also. I'll just type, type it over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, how do I stop? It's okay. Let, let me do that. Uh, all right. Uh, I think that was one of the not one of the. I think the the most crispest talk till date. Um, I was very visual. You clearly showed before and after, and uh, you also ended with the recap. I, I think this was amazing. Um, Folks, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. You can either raise your hand or just put it in the chat, or you can just unmute yourself and just ask. Did, did you get uh, what Shubham tried to convey? Any, any doubts in that? If you understood, maybe you can just put it in the chat so that uh, we know. So this this feels like the suspense mode. Like Shivam wants to know, ki, <laughs> did you get it or did you not get it? <laughs> yeah, it was my first thought. So yeah, little nervous. All right. Got so, the idea. says it was very clear. Nice talk. Got the idea. Got it. Okay. I, I think uh, that that's that's the thing, right? Ki, if you have no questions, then either it was like super clear or it went totally above the head. But I think this was super clear. So, okay. all right, Shivam has a question. Go for it, Shivam. Yeah, sure. Shivam, are you typing? You can also... Unmute and oh, I see you are unmuted. I'm not. I'm not able to hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You can just maybe type it. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. if you have any question? Um... Yeah, it would certainly help a lot. Dynamic inputs are really useful. Have you used a good input? Yeah. So. As like uh, I mentioned, I'm using a new library called Tamak Tamakwi, and their starter temp, temp their starter template uses Turbo Repo. Yeah. All Any right. Any other questions? Yeah. Final questions. I think we'll wrap this up early, which is like, which is like close to what we have in mind. Like we want to like wrap all sessions within this time frame we'll we'll move towards crispr and crispr docs uh, like i've shared in the previous sessions as well we want to get to a place where we end a talk exactly at eight minutes so so yeah this is crisp for you and everyone else and it is sustainable all right um well then that will be about it i'll stop the recording now we can hang around if you want but sure. uh, overall Thanks, Shivam, for doing this. And uh, for all the participants, hopefully we'll see you next time. If you want to talk about anything that you have worked on recently or maybe uh, in the last year, just feel free to either ping in the Discord server, reply to that message, or just ping me directly. We'll set up the next edition of this. And I feel uh, these like small, small nuggets would be like compound well over time. And... Uh, uh, like this, I like this cross sharing of ideas because you don't need to do everything yourself. You can like just sort of uh, absorb knowledge from each other now that most of you are working uh, in real world projects. All right, yeah. we will stop this for now and uh, see you next time.